Next up, we have Carl Kosher talking about enabling HTTPS for home network devices using Let's Encrypt. All right, thanks. Uh, so I'm Carl Kosher. Uh, I'm a research scientist at the University of Washington doing uh, wireless and embedded system security. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the challenges of uh, using TLS on home network uh, devices or uh, other internal network devices and uh, a way to uh, easily issue certificates for these devices. So why is TLS important? Uh, isn't, you know, WPA on your network enough? I mean, it's already encrypting and authenticating your communication. Well, as it turns out, browsers are really pushing for TLS these days. Um, Chrome and some other browsers are now requiring TLS uh, to use certain powerful APIs. Um, uh, such as um, accessing the user's uh, web camera or running service workers or pushing notifications. And so if you want to um, write an app that uses these uh, what they call powerful features, you need to serve that over TLS. And the problem with that is if you want to make a web application that uses those features and also communicates with local network devices, you can't really do that because it also blocks uh, cross-origin requests uh, from a secure origin to a non-secure origin. Um, and so to make this uh, a bit more concrete, I was trying to write a app for the Chromecast which requires applications to be served over HTTPS to connect to this HD Home Run TV tuner um, so that I could watch um, uh, TV channels uh, on my TV through my Chromecast um, while it, it connects to the TV tuner and pulls down the, the MPEG stream. The problem is that um, so the Chromecast can easily discover the HD home run device. It gets its IP address. However, because the HD home run device only speaks HTTP, it can't actually do that cross origin request to get that uh, MPEG data stream. And so this is sort of the problem that really um, uh, caused me to, to look at this issue. So why is uh, doing local TLS hard? Well, uh, as I alluded to, um, local devices are often discovered by their, I <coughs> by their IP address and not by a particular host name. Uh, TLS certs, on the other hand, are issued for a specific host name. So uh, in the common name or the uh, subject alternate name, you have a list of uh, fully qualified domain names that a certificate is valid for. And, um, so if you're just connecting to an IP address, uh, that doesn't match what it is in the, the certs. Some uh, device manufacturers will uh, ship a cert uh, on the device uh, and that certificate is the same across all devices. Uh, however, that can be easily abused. Um, you might remember the Superfish scandal that happened several years ago. Basically, uh, this software uh, pre-installed a uh, certificate um, that was uh, used as a CA certificate that could uh, sign uh, any host name uh, whatsoever. And the problem there was that the private key was shared across all laptops. And so anyone with the Superfish software could then create uh, certificates for any domain name. Um, so you can also do that uh, when you have shared certificates across these network devices. Uh, even if you do unique certificates, again because you're uh, discovering these devices by IP address, um, they will often be for a common host name like uh, router.homeland.com or something like that. And so if you have any of these certificates, uh, you can get them, re you can um, basically use those to uh, do man in the middle attacks on, uh, on that domain name. Um, if you want to do something with like let's encrypt, uh, the problem there is that 
A lot of end users typically don't own a domain. Uh, I imagine most people in this room probably do, but uh, real users don't. Uh, and so there's not really a, a domain that people can use to uh, get their own certificate. And finally, even if they do have their own domain name and they want to get a domain with Let's Encrypt, uh, these local devices aren't externally facing, so the typical way of using CertBot to automatically generate these certificates uh, doesn't really work because uh, Let's Encrypt can't talk back to the device to verify uh, domain ownership or control. So it turns out that one company has actually solved this issue, and that company is Plex. So Plex is, uh, well, it's a little sketchy, but it's basically uh, Netflix for your own uh, home media um, server. And uh, the way that they solved it is they issue each server a 16-byte GUID, and then Plex issues a wildcard cert for this GUID.plex.direct. And so whenever you want to talk to your Plex server on a particular IP address, you go to IP address.guid.plex.direct and they have name servers set up that automatically resolve that uh, directly to A.B.C.D. Now this seems a little weird, but um, the key here is that by going to that fully qualified domain name instead of an IP address, um, the uh, fully qualified domain name matches with the wildcard cert that the server has uh, and then the connection is trusted automatically. And so this allows for um, uh, friends to connect to your server over the internet, even if you have a dynamic uh, IP address from your ISP, it also uh, lets you connect directly uh, on internal um, like 192.168 uh, IP addresses as well and everything is uh, nice and secured. So Plex partnered with a certificate authority to issue these certs. And that's kind of costly and uh, most IoT vendors won't bother doing this. So I was wondering if we could actually use Let's Encrypt which provides free certificates to do this. And as it turns out you actually can. So let's talk a little bit about how Let's Encrypt uh, automatically issue certificates. So they use what's known as the ACME protocol, the automation, uh, automated certificate management environment protocol. And this is implemented by a, a client called CertBot and by a CA software called Boulder. And this is a way to uh, basically automate uh, domain validation to prove that you have control over d a domain that you want um, a certificate for. Uh, so the way that this, that the ACME protocol works is that the certificate authority issues you a challenge uh, to prove uh, control over a domain that you want a certificate for. And there's a couple of different types of challenges. Uh, the two main ones right now are HTTP01 where the uh, certificate authority asks you to create a file at a specific URL with uh, specific contents and it verifies that you put that file there and if you did uh, then you have control over that domain and they give you a certificate for that. There's also DNS01 where you add a text record um, for the domain name uh, with a, a specific content uh, um, uh, secure token uh, and uh, this is the only way to get uh, wildcard certificates um, but it's nice that they do uh, give you wildcard certificates now. Um, so for accounts, um, basically they are associated with a public private key pair. Um, you're the, so you automatically generate this private key um, and derive the public key from that. And that public key is essentially your account ID. Now they do have sort of a, an internal account ID that you actually use um, for efficiency and, and other reasons. But basically your account is this public private key pair. And you use this private key that you generate yourself to sign all requests including the initial registration with Let's Encrypt where you tell them that you agree to the terms of service and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so my proposed solution for um, 
using Let's Encrypt uh, for local devices is um, this service that I'm calling TLS MyNet, which lets you issue wildcard certificates for subdomain that is tied to your Let's Encrypt uh, account public key. So tying the um, the subdomain to your Let's Encrypt account uh, basically lets you verify le legitimacy at an application level. Um, so uh, you know that you are always going to talk to your server at a particular subdomain and as long as that subdomain matches you know that um, the private uh, that at least someone with the corresponding private key um, proved uh, that they had that private key and they um, got a certificate for that domain. So the basic way that this works is you use uh, Let's Encrypt um, as normal but uh, instead of proving um, control over your own domain you ask a third party uh, to uh, prove control of a subdomain um, and uh, that third party then um, s solves that challenge for you by creating that text record. So the way that this works is the device initiates a subdomain wildcard certificate request with Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt says okay here's a DNS challenge. Uh, the device then sends that challenge request to TLS MyNet. This request is signed with the public key using uh, JSON web signatures. Uh, the thumbprint of the corresponding public key um, is used as the subdomain uh, and because of limitations of DNS we actually have to encode this as base 36 which is kind of icky but um, it, it works. Uh, and basically the, the public private key pair here is the same uh, public private key that is tied to your Let's Encrypt en account. Uh, so this is currently implemented in uh, two Python scripts um, uh, that are on GitHub right now and I'll uh, give you that URL later. The first is uh, dnsserver.py and this does two things primarily. One it resolves uh, that uh, IP address dot thumbprint dot TLS my dot net to that IP address. Um, so it, it handles that for you. The second is that it also resolves these uh, text records um, that are used for uh, subdomain uh, verification with less encrypt. Uh, it uses this library called DNSLib which uh, lets you easily create uh, DNS clients and server servers uh, using Python. Right now the server is sort of uh, single threaded and synchronous and so there could theoretically be some performance issues but uh, I am planning on migrating that to uh, Python's async IO uh, fairly shortly. Uh, the second half of this uh, system is the, the web server which receives these requests uh, for creating these text records to respond to these challenges. Uh, this does use async IO so even though it's single threaded um, it can handle multiple requests and while it's waiting on one it can service another. Uh, and it uses uh, also this uh, JW crypto library for doing uh, JSON web signatures and, and JSON web keys and things like that. And then in between there's just a standard Redis server that's a temporary uh, key value store for storing um, specific text records uh, for specific subdomains. Um, and those, uh, those last for five minutes. Um, and so the nice thing here is that really there doesn't need to be any state that you actually store on this server. Uh, you just need the, the key value store long enough to uh, do the domain verification. Um, you don't need accounts because uh, those are automatically proven by using the public uh, private key pairs. Uh, and uh, you know the resolving an IP address uh, is you know straightforward. So currently this is still a, a work in progress. Um, there is a test client right now uh, on GitHub that uh, s sends a, a request to create a challenge um, to the web server. Uh, it, it could be better um, but you know hopefully that's coming soon. Um, I am 
planning on integrating this with Certbot as a plugin. However, there's a, a little um, issue there where the uh, Certbot plugins don't automatically expose the account uh, public and private keys to uh, the extensions there. So that's a little issue I'll, I'll have to work through. The server currently has a little brokenness with case sensitivity but, but I'm going to fix that today. Um, it, uh, I have tested it and it does work and as I said before uh, the DNS server will be modified to use uh, async IO for a bit more performance. Um, so the code is up right now on GitHub on uh, github.com slash supersat slash tlsmy.net. Uh, so before I uh, finish this talk, I uh, might want to talk a bit about the risk model here. Um, this seems a bit um, non-standard and you might have some concerns about this and uh, I'll just talk uh, a little bit about those. So the third party domain that you use uh, in this instance tlsmy.net is um, assumed to be trusted because they can always prove uh, control over uh, that domain and any of its subdomains. Uh, but the way I envision this being used is that uh, each device manufacturer runs their own service for this and you're already trusting that manufacturer anyway. Um, so there, there's some sort of implicit trust there. Um, also, as of uh, fairly recently, there's these things called certificate transparency logs where every certificate that is issued is um, uh, appended to these uh, append only logs, which, you know, blockchain, eh, whatever. Um, t basically, to, to prove um, or to basically to uh, show that certificate authorities are not issuing certificates that are unauthorized. So if you're concerned about your uh, third party domain provider um, issuing a certificate uh, for your subdomain or issuing a wildcard cert for the entire domain, you can go through and search these uh, certificate transparency logs to make sure that they are uh, doing the right thing. Uh, so my plan is to release uh, TLS MyNet as a public service uh, and, um, you know, get this idea out there. Perhaps maybe get uh, Let's Encrypt to, to support this natively and do the same DNS resolution uh, and challenges that, um, uh, that we support right now. Um, I mostly see this as sort of a proof of concept service uh, to encourage uh, TLS adoption for these local network devices um, that uh, are currently hard to get uh, TLS certificates for. And uh, please, please, please bug your manufacturers to, to support TLS. So even if you have um, these certificates, you know, these devices still need a way to uh, load these certificates into them uh, and actually speak HTTPS and, and TLS and these things. And even if you do get a certificate, uh, the device still needs to talk TLS. Um, so in summary, I would say, you know, going forward, TLS uh, is absolutely essential for uh, these innovative web applications. Uh, browsers are demanding it. Devices like the Chromecast are demanding it. Uh, basically, you need TLS if you want to um, use a lot of these new powerful features. Um, currently, they, uh, these TLS certificates are difficult to acquire for uh, these internal network devices for a bunch of reasons that I talked about. Um, but I uh, have proposed here a way of uh, easily getting these uh, wildcard certificates uh, using a third party service. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, this is my email address, my Twitter handle, and the GitHub account for the TLS MyNet service. So, so thanks. All right. Thank you, Carl. If you have questions, please come up and line up by me. Did you have any problems with running into uh, DNS needing a CAA record? So we, uh, no. So we do not return CAA records for that. We could return CAA records for that, but um, 
the so for people who don't know the CAA records uh, basically uh, say or they tell a certificate authority which CAs are allowed to issue certificates for a particular domain. Um, we currently don't uh, return any CAA records, so theoretically any CA could issue um, uh, certs for uh, TLS MyNet. Um, I, I could add it. Other questions? Oh, all right, well, then let's give Carl one last big round of applause. All right, thanks. Thank you, Carl.